What's up guys and welcome back to SP Vids. In this video, I wanna give you guys a template for making your first beat tape. It can be a bit of a daunting prospect putting everything together. So hopefully this template gives you a little bit of guidance if it's something that you haven't done before. Now, full disclaimer on this one, obviously creative things it is sometimes up to you guys to figure out what works best for you. And it's not the best thing to be told what to do when you're trying to do something creative. But I figured that if some of you haven't done it at all before and you're really interested in doing it, but don't know where to start, then this could be some useful information for you guys. and it's going to be a nice template for you guys to work with even if you change a few things here and there to suit your needs so i hope this information is useful but yeah like i say this might not be useful for absolutely everyone out there you sometimes just need to do a little bit of work to get it to work for you so just quickly before i start please head over to instagram and follow me on there i'm going to be doing a competition for my beat packs very very soon so head over there it's spvids underscore i'd really appreciate it if you guys could follow me there as well and yeah there'll be a little competition coming out very soon where you can win stuff from my shop so stay tuned for that so let's get into this structure or template of how I put together my beat tapes and hopefully it can help you guys out too. So the first thing that I always do is spend some time digging for samples. Now, if you wanna make playlists, this is like a really good opportunity to do this. What I do is I build playlists of samples which I think are gonna be good. Have them there as a resource to dig through at a later point. So it is a little bit tedious at first, but you just have to kind of tr try and enjoy the process of listening to music and discovering new music. So that's what I do. I spend some time just chilling, listening to some music. If I hear something I like and I think I can make a beat out of it, I'll pop it into a playlist, whether that's on YouTube, Spotify, etc., etc. Build up a huge archive of sampleable tracks and then I can just dig into those when I want to start a new project. So I always make sure I've got a collection of samples ready to go. I'm not the kind of person that goes and digs for the sake of making a, a beat tape. I like to have my samples ready there and then I can dig through those and know that it's going to be stuff which I can probably make a beat out of. I think that's a really good place to start. If you don't do that, what you can do is you run into that process of trying samples. They don't work. You get frustrated and it can be a real hindrance when you're making a beat tape. So yeah, Always good to have those samples ready to go. Okay, so once you've got your samples ready, the next thing I always do is decide a workflow. Now this, for me, is absolutely crucial because the workflow can be the thing that just gets in the way so much when you're trying to make a beat tape. If you haven't decided what equipment you're gonna use and you have a little bit of equipment lying around, like I've got quite a few of the SPs, obviously. I've got the PO33, I've got my MPC. If I don't decide on a workflow, what happens is I start flitting between them all because I'm trying to find this sound and it ends up just falling apart basically. So what I found was best to do is just pick the samplers or instruments or whatever it is that I'm gonna use, stick to that workflow and use it as a kind of experiment to be like, okay, what can I make with these particular samplers? What can I make with this particular workflow? So yeah, for me, workflow is really crucial for productivity and I always make sure I've got that nailed before I start making beats. Okay, the next thing I will do after that, and this is obviously optional for you guys, but I like to have loads of drums sat in my samplers ready to go. If you need some drums, check out spvids.com. I've got lo-fi packs on there. Plenty of drums for you to use on your project, so go check those out if you want to support the channel. But yeah, basically what I like to do is get loads of drums loaded into my SP because the last thing I want to be doing when I find a really nice loop or I've chopped and found a really good sequence of chops that I like, don't want to have to be digging around for drums. I want them all there ready. Whether you're using one shots or you like chopping up drum breaks, just get it all ready, all ready to go. You don't want anything stopping that creativity when creativity hits. So get them all ready, reserve a bank for all your drums like I do, and then they're ready to go, ready to lay over your beats straight away. Okay, so you've got all your drums ready now, and the next thing for me is I wanna get inspired and make some beats. So this can be something that you can't really control you might have to just wait for it to happen you just need to have everything ready in the first place and then when that creativity strikes you need to be ready to go with everything in place you don't want to have anything in the way well this is for me personally anyway i don't want to have any obstacles in the way when that creativity strikes i want to be straight in there i've got my drums i've got my sample playlist they're all ready to go i've got my workflow sorted and i just want to sit down and create so yeah whatever you need to do to get yourself inspired i tend to find that listening to lo-fi music really really gets me inspired as soon as i hear some beats that i like making i'm just itching to get on my sp devices and want to start making beats so find out what works for you maybe it's going for exercise maybe it's reading listening to music so do what you need to do to get inspired then sit down at your samplers and get making beats okay so another hot tip when you're making a tape is i always tend to find that you want to make more beats than you actually are going to release this means that you have a collection of beats that you can choose from and then you can choose your best ones as well 
Last thing you want to do is forcing yourself to make beats for the sake of having enough space for a tape. So if you don't manage to make enough beats in one sitting or two sittings, don't rush it. Take a step back, reflect on the beats that you've made already, maybe start sorting them and deciding which ones you like, which ones you like the sound of. Start building up a little catalogue of your beats and then you will be able to cherry pick the best ones when it comes to actually putting the tape together. It's a really good approach. Musicians for years have done this obviously when they release an album they don't just write the songs that are on the album they've probably written twice as many songs and then they just pick the best ones exactly the same thing applies for beat tapes in my opinion make more beats than you want on that tape and then trim it down and then you've only got your best beats on there okay and finally just another tip as well if you are making a project and you get disheartened halfway through maybe something happens you know and you start getting disheartened try not to let that get in your way i always say try and get the project finished even if you find it a, a little bit tedious to get it finished i always suggest trying to finish that product and finish that project even if you don't end up releasing the tape it will be really really useful for you as a reference because what i found through the years is making tapes they kind of feel like milestones in your beat making career well i say career i use that term loosely obviously we're not all professional beat makers but getting those milestones down is such a good way to monitor your own progression and get some confidence in yourself so every time i lay a tape down i'll always keep it even if i don't end up releasing it it's just there somewhere in the archive and you never know in a few months or a few weeks a few days even you might go back and listen to it and find that you actually like it a lot more than you thought you did and you may end up releasing it so Always get that project finished, even if you're feeling a bit disheartened when you're making it. I always find it's just best to just push through that little bit of annoyance that you get in projects. It always happens in creative projects. Get the product or tape finished and you will honestly feel a lot better for it once you've done it. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. I hope this information was useful for you and good luck if you are starting your first ever beat tape. If you've made a beat tape before, maybe some of these tips will be useful as well. I really hope they are as well. A huge shout out again to all my members. Thank you very much for being members of the channel. If it's something you guys are interested in doing, please use the link in the description. There's a little link and you can pay a monthly fee to me. It's very small and it just keeps the channel going and keeps it sustained. So that'd be awesome if you could have a little look at that and support me in what I do. Like I say as well, go and follow me on Instagram. There's a little competition coming soon and I post stuff very regularly on there as well. But apart from that, guys, keep making beats and I'll be back with more content soon. Peace.